So I um, imagine in your role as an actor, you will strive to find a kind of um, semblance of humanity, something to kind of connect yourself to the role at hand, to find empathy that allows you to get into their heads and bring them to life. That must have been pretty damn hard on this occasion. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, this uh, I'm, I'm taking you saw this movie. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a very interesting movie, and it was a real challenge for me. So uh, I, I uh, you know, Stefan, I, I don't, I don't like to shy away too much from something I think that uh, is uh, is going to cause me problems. Um, and this one was. It was the dialogue, which I've been kind of uh, remarking that it's it's like Southern Gothic, um, like Shakespearean prose. It's it's a very it was a very weird speech pattern. Um, the way it was written, Robert Allen uh, Diltz wrote. Uh, um, so that was interesting. That the, the the number of days the film was going to be shot in, it was a compressed, very small budget. Uh, there was no, you know, none of the frills of uh, big budget movie making. Um, the actors were challenging. Scotty Hayes is an incredible actor. Nick Stahl, Kelly Garner. Uh, I had been impressed with. Uh, Vincent Grashaw, uh, one of his films. So you look at it, and there's no money involved. So there's no, you're not doing this for, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not a payday. Uh, so why would you do this? And that's of course what my agent said, and, uh, my manager, <laughs> other people. And you, 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 you basically just, you know, it, it comes down to, I find the director interesting. I find the story interesting. I don't know if I can play this monster. I would like to try. Uh, I have a son, I have a daughter. Uh, I, you know, there's certain things you can draw, you know, you can find that uh, overlap and relate, are relatable to you as an actor, but can you go to this dark place and uh, uh, do it? I felt protected uh, within that because of, uh, you know, what's going on with the character himself. And I don't want to reveal that to the audience because I want them to come to that conclusion at the end. Um, so that's it. You know, I, I, sometimes I get inspired and sometimes I don't, mm. I can't do this all the time though. It's not a smart play. Um, uh, it sort of devalues, it devalues yourself, uh, um, uh, as a, as a commodity. And I think that's some of the things that people fear about when you do too many of these, you know, uh, these films like this, but this one was interesting. And I, I felt like it had some integrity, mm. even though it's dark as hell. Yeah, it's pretty dark. <laughs> Do you have to sometimes just concede that you're playing someone that you just don't like? I mean, because I guess some actors always say they have to try and find a way to like them. But do you well, well I, I like the guy. I yeah. mean, I, I, I like the guy. I Again, you have to go to the end of the movie to understand why I'm saying this, because there's 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 um, there's a world he's living in. Mm. And. It's revealed to you. So as an actor, I'm comfortable because I know that's the reality. Mm. Does that make sense yeah, to yeah. you without giving away the story? Well, I've, seen, I've seen it as well. So <laughs> it does make sense. But, I know, but the people that have it, right, that are listening <laughs> to you here, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give away too much. Mm. But, you know, at the end, the, the all, all of a sudden you realize, oh, mm. uh, evil exists in all of us. Hmm. and good exists in all of us if you believe in god you believe in satan hmm. there's no two ways around it. and there's evil everywhere and as an actor you have to kind of question yourself you're not you know can i bring this up am i in touch with this uh and you can find it if you're comfortable with it it's okay if you're uncomfortable with it you don't do it you know, you don't do the project. This one, this this one in particular, I found a way to to uh, to uh, to uh, to you know uh, uh, feel feel comfortable within within the uh, again the context of who this character is. Yeah, I mean, as as a man who has seamlessly moved between genres his whole career, what sort of reaction do you cherish most? Do you, do you, when people say they love the movie and made them laugh, or when people say they found it utterly disturbing? <laughs> Well, I think, I, you know, I don't, I, people that are utterly disturbed, and I've, I have seen, you know, some people saying this character really made my skin crawl. I know some of the other characters that I've done that are just, I think some of the, even 
this may be one of the most horrible guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but I loved him coming back and doing something like Scorpion. Yeah. You know, where I'm, I got a heart of gold and I'm an FBI agent that's taking care of a bunch of misfits uh, or John Doggett of the X-Files, mm-hmm. where I've got, you know, probably one of the most genuine hearts of, uh, of anybody I've ever played. He was the, mm-hmm. it's one of the reasons why he's my favorite character. But I love that extreme. That's what acting is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's uh, tragedy and comedy. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, one extreme to the other. And you're and I love the way you said that. That was very, very kind of you. But. Uh, it, it doesn't seem seamless sometimes, you know, uh, you're, you're running around doing different things. Um, I, I, I feel very blessed mm-hmm. that I had that capacity, <clears throat> excuse me, that I had that capacity to go back and forth because mm-hmm. some people can't do it yeah. because some people are so damn famous that, uh, you know, you know, uh, I don't want to throw anybody's name out because it's not fair, but they're so damn famous that you can't do it. You can't, I can't see this guy as this, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. So I've stayed just underneath uh, there a little bit where I can still shock you. <laughs> are you, are you a nostalgic person at all? Do you ever go back and revisit old work or do you ever kind of initiate little reunions? You never catch up with all sort of cast members and people that you work with for those across the years. Well, I am doing one this weekend uh, at the, the uh, Companion, uh, July 30th, uh, online. Uh, 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 I'm getting together with Frank Spotnitz, who created John Doggett and Annabeth Gish. We're having a reunion. We're going to talk about John Doggett and the X-Files and, and uh, Monica Reyes. I, I, I've been talking to them a little bit about it. I don't go back and watch my movies. Um, every once in a while, something, I will just happen to come across it and see it. And it happened recently uh, over Christmas. Uh, uh, my 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 kids were home here, and and uh, 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 Copland was on. And I said to my kids, "Have you guys ever seen this?" And they said, "No." And so I said, "Well, let's watch it." So we watched it. So something like that'll happen, and we'll watch it. Um, but yeah, I don't go back and look at it. Mm. Uh, I, I I I I don't do that that often. But do, do you mind speaking about old projects and being asked by fans about like, iconic roles like, you know, T-1000 in, in Terminator 2? I mean, I feel like some actors don't want to feel like they're defined by certain roles. But then you speak to some who are so happy to have played a part that connected with audiences and resonated with audiences. They're just thrilled to, to share it with people. What Which side of side do you fall into in that regard? Well, Stefan, it kind of goes like this, OK? It, it just like your career kind of goes like this. And, and, and I think early on, I was like, Oh my God, I'm never going to get out from underneath the shadow of the T-1000. Mm. Why can't people talk about Walk the Line? Mm. Uh, you know, what about my last movie? I just said, what, why, why, why can't I, why isn't that making a dent on anybody? Um, but now as a 63 year old man, that's had a long career and, and uh, uh, been fortunate enough to be able to keep it going. I realized what a blessing it is that I was the T-1000 mm. and, uh, uh, I love to talk to fans about it. As a matter of fact, I'm going out of my way to meet more fans and I enjoy the hell out of it, meeting them at these comic cons and, and having them tell me about, you know, my father and I used to watch this or you scared the hell out of me or, or, uh, you know, I grew up, you know, loving John Doggett on the X-Files and it's very rewarding for me because now I can actually physically plan to go and meet fans that uh that have supported me over the years and and i am really am enjoying it very very much i'm i'm so grateful to uh to meet everybody yeah i realize it's not always been the case so you know (laughs) sometimes i can get a little like i can get a little better and be like "Uh, uh, the last thing i want to talk about is that but you know that that's not where i'm at right now so i'm very grateful I realized by asking if you mind speaking about old projects, I was inadvertently just speaking about old projects. <laughs> Pardon me? I said by, by asking if you minded speaking about old projects, I was inadvertently just speaking about old projects. That's so a good thing you don't Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, but, very um, good. you're very good, Stefan. <laughs> but you mentioned, I mean, just what you mentioned, sort of watching sort of some of your kids. Has that been a, something you've you've sort of enjoyed doing across the years? Just sharing? Because I guess there's films that they would, you had to wait for them to get to a certain age before you could sit down and watch it. Is that something you've always enjoyed doing? Kind of get sitting down with the family and watching stuff you've made? Or do you, is that, do you ever feel a bit, I don't know, self-conscious about sticking something on that you star in? <laughs> 
Well, again, it only it's only a, a, you know a happy mistake. Uh, it's I don't force my kids to sit down and watch anything. Uh, I don't even know if my kids have seen any. I, I don't even know what they've seen of my career. Mm -hmm. So no, it's not like I haul the whole family together and say, all right, everybody sit down. You have to watch this. Uh, that doesn't happen. Um, and, you know, uh, I have two wonderful, wonderful children that are both going to be in the entertainment field. And they're both going to be performers. And uh, it's not something I uh, encouraged or discouraged. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, they've both chosen to do. And, and uh, I'm excited for them. Um, but no, I don't, I don't make, I don't even make my wife watch everything. I do. You know, <laughs> she hasn't seen everything I do, you know. So, uh, no, that's, that's not. Right. That's not something I do. I did take them to see, I did take them to see a 1990s print mm. of Terminator 2 at the Arclight Cinema in Hollywood uh, that was arranged by a dear friend of mine, Anna Barsh, who's a fan and worked at the Arclight. And we had a screening and I kind of did a Q&A, I guess, afterwards. Uh, and my children, I took them, I said, you know what, it's a very rare opportunity. I would love for you to come see this. Please join me. And they did. And they, they got a kick out of it. They were like, wow, you know, <laughs> they were walking a little closer to me that day, you know, <laughs> yeah. a, little, a little bit more proud. Yeah. I mean, but since you've started working in this industry, you've always seemed to be so busy. Is that just how you like to work? Are you just one of those actors who just enjoys going from project to project. Do you do you ever get the chance to have a little bit of a a little bit of a breather? Well, my publicist likes to say I, I have a hard time sitting on my hands. Yeah. Susan Patricola. Uh, I think my agents want me to show slow down a little bit on some of the projects I'm doing, um, uh, uh, some of the independents. So I am turning things down. I do turn things down. Uh, I have a Harley Davidson business now. I own a dealership in Santa Clarita, California, which is opening up some new creativity and doors of, uh, of focus for me to have. I love riding Harley Davidsons. I ride them all over the country, um, part of a motorcycle club. And, uh, you know, I have other things that I like to do. Uh, and I, I can find things to do to stay busy. Um, I, I don't know. I think maybe I got to Hollywood late. I was 24, 25 when I started my career. And uh, I think I just wanted to make up for lost time. And um, I just feel compelled. I, I feel this sense of urgency to try to get it all out before I'm gone, you know? Um, um, you know, uh, our mortality is uh, imminent and, uh, you know, we've all got a clock ticking and I don't know how many good roles I got in me and I don't know how many, you know, I, I'd like to try to do as much as I can. I'm losing friends every year. I lose somebody. So, um, sure. How about you? <laughs> I like to keep busy, but I, I, but from this side of things, you know, I like to keep busy watching other people be busy. But I'm pleased you're so busy because it uh, means you get to see lots of Robert Patrick films. <laughs> yeah, I like to. I like to. I, I, well, you're you're very kind. You know what? You want to know something? It's funny. It it depends on what what you know where you are. I've I've had people. I've met people that have said to me, uh, "Oh, you're the guy from Terminator 2 yeah yeah that's me do you ever do anything else you know you go like wow really you haven't seen anything else i've done there no are you still acting you know and that's that's where you kind of go wow yeah. all right that's that's a big film and uh yeah i guess you know you don't want to be perceived as a one-hit wonder that's why i'm sort of very you know grateful for some of the opportunities that have come along like the x-files and Mm -hmm. sopranos and uh, walk the line and on and on right yeah and even this one what Josiah did I thought it was really I mean I, I found it dark and disturbing but I thought it was a really brilliantly executed film really enjoyed it's it. uh it yeah. is listen I said to Vincent when I saw it I went and saw it with Vincent the director uh Kelly Nick and Scott we watched it at Scott Hayes's uh, theater he has uh he has got a a, a drama you know a, a the playhouse and we screened the movie there and i said to vincent 
that is one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. One of the most interesting, and it's really one of those films that I think people are going to study in film school. I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. It's really different. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, at least it's not boring. No. Right? <laughs> right? You may not like it. You may yeah. like it. I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's just really disturbing. Yeah. And on that lovely note, uh, Rob, it's been a real pleasure speaking to you. I feel like I've got to go on for hours, but unfortunately, that's my time. But thank well, you. Well, so <laughs> thank you. Thanks for pulling it out of me, buddy. It's nice to meet you. I look forward to seeing you again, sir. Yeah, you too, man. Take care. See you later. All right, bud. Cheers. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.